Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, I wanted to share some of the CMD commands that I use on day-to-day -day basis. Uh, no matter where you are in your IT journey, if you just started in a help desk or if you are a sysadmin, these commands will definitely be useful uh, for troubleshooting uh, network connectivity or network issues. Uh, they are very simple and uh, I just wanted to give a refresher on them and wanted to encourage you guys to use them uh, to help you solve network problems more easily. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I have a Word document uh, about the commands that I wanted to talk about. Uh, also, I will put this in the description so you guys can just look at it or refer to it while watching the video. So yeah, uh, the first one is of course IP config to get the IP address of your computer. I'm gonna launch the command prompt. Uh, usually, and it's most of these commands, you would have to launch it as admin. Uh, so I'm gonna do that right now on my computer. Now keep in mind my computer is not joined to a domain, a local domain or uh, Azure domain or entry domain. It's just a normal home computer. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so IP config. I if I execute that, it lists all the network adapters or network interface on my computer, the Ethernet ones, the wireless or the Wi-Fi. Uh, so this there this is the one that's currently active on my computer, and as you can see, it shows the IPv6 address, the domain, which is just a work group. It's called home. Uh, the IPv4 address, which is still, which is the most important information you can get through this command, which is the IP address of a computer, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. So these are the information you get when you run IP config. Okay. All right. Next one would be IP config all. Uh, let's run this and see what we get. All right. So we'll do the upper arrow and just add dash all or slash all. It does. The same thing lists all the network interface card or NIC on my computer. However, this time there is much more information. If we scroll down to the active interface, the interface that my computer is currently using to connect to the internet, which is this one here, you can see the, the work group name, you can see the manufacturer, you can also see the MAC address. So if you want to know the MAC address of your network interface card, you will you will use ipconfig uh, slash all. With the MAC address, you get to see the DHCP server uh, that your computer is using to get the IP address. In this case, this is going to be my modem, which is usually the case for most of the home computers. Uh, it's your modem which also does the DHCP or handing out the IP addresses. Uh, also you can see the DNS server which is the internal DNS server and the external DNS server. So this is the public one and this is again the gateway or the modem. Uh, other than that you can see the lease when did you when was this IP address handed to your computer when it was obtained. And when does it expire? You can also see the subnet. All that good information you can find out by running ipconfig slash all. Moving on to the next one, uh, which is DNS. Now, D if you've been working in IT, you know a lot of issues which are caused by DNS. So let's see what we can do to you know remove DNS, flush DNS, check out the DNS cache in our computer. The first one on the list is ipconfig flush DNS. This is used when you want to just get rid of all the cache on your computer. And by cache, I mean the DNS cache. So before I run the flush DNS command, I wanted to show you what my, my computer's DNS cache looks like. And to view the cache, I just have run ipconfig slash display DNS. And this is going to display all the mappings of IP addresses with the host name that my computer remembers. Uh, this, this, this cache is used by the computer or the browsers to, to browse the internet 
or the websites more quickly. Instead of it going to and querying the public DNS, computer just remembers the sites we visited recently so that it just automatic it, it just does it faster. So yeah, that command just lists all the IP addresses, uh, IP address with the, uh, with the record name, uh, usually the A record. Okay, uh, these are the sites that I've been to, Olama, these are usually, I was recently working with uh, Kubernetes and some LLMs, uh, large language model. So that's what the cache is, mostly. Um, yeah, so that's what the cache looks like. And if you want to flush it or remove it, we just do ipconfig flush DNS. Very easy to remember, uh, and you can see it says successfully flushed the DNS. And if I run the display command again, it should not show me anything, but it is still showing me that. Okay, hmm, that's weird. Uh, but it's not going to show that on your computer, it's just the, the way my computer is set up, uh, it's still remembering it. But yeah, just, just running this command. <laughs> Uh, trust me guys, it's gonna work, okay? Flash DNS works. Just just run this if you are having DNS resolution problem. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's see, renew IP address. So, uh, if you remember when we did the IP config all, it shows us that we were leased this this IP address. Now, if we want to get this IP address, if we want to get a new IP address, from the modem what we can do is we can run ip config slash release and so we'll add two and signs there ip config slash renew and that's just gonna remove the current ip and remember this is gonna disconnect your uh, internet for a moment because you're releasing. Releasing means removing or releasing your current IP and renew is basically your computer asking the modem or the DHCP server to get you another IP address. So that command finished and if I check uh, the lease, the obtain lease, uh, it should display current right now. So February 10th, uh, 10 p.m. and that's the time it's currently at. Uh, uh, and yeah, that's that shows that this command was successful. I was able to remove my previous IP and ask for a new one, even though I got the same IP. But yeah, it's just how DSCP server is. But yeah, this is the command IP config release and IP config renew to get a new IP address from the DSCP server. Moving on to the next one here, which is ping. Ping is the king of all network commands, in my opinion. Uh, whether you want to test the connectivity to another computer, connectivity to the server, connectivity to anything, you run ping. Ping, and let us let me test if I can connect or if I'm able to, if, if, the, if the, the modem is still live. So the address of my modem is the gateway. So I'm just going to type that here, 2.1, and yes, it is alive. I am able to receive reply from it. Uh, ping can be used to test connectivity. It can be used to see if the host is target host is alive uh, and much more. All right, so I'm just going to end that here by control C. Uh, so yeah, ping is very useful. All right, next one is NS lookup. NS lookup is used when you're working with domains. And if you're working with internal uh, or domain network, internal domain network. So let's let's say if you want to know the IP address of the domain controller, uh, how you would do that is you would use NS lookup and you would just put in the name of your domain controller. Let's say your domain controller is called uh, aj-server-dc for domain controller. Now, this is a home environment. I don't actually have a domain controller running, so it's not going to give me anything here. And it's just going to say, can't find this. But if you were in a domain environment and there was a domain controller and the DNS server was configured, you would be able to fetch the IP address of that domain controller using NSLOOKUP command. 
Another scenario where IP, uh, NSLOOKUP could be useful is when you're trying to set up a VPN connection for a user who is working from home and they're trying to connect to their office computer. So office computer usually have a host name. Uh, let's say my office computer is called AJ dash uh, office PC. Okay, so I want to connect to this office computer from the home computer using remote desktop protocol, uh, which is what's that's what's used commonly for folks who work from home. They connect to their office computer so i'm just going to put aj dash uh, office dash pc and hit connect but sometime it doesn't find that over the vpn network uh, in those cases we want to try using the ip address of that office computer uh, and th and you can find that out by just doing ns lookup okay so that's another scenario. Uh, it might not work because the DNS is not working in first place. Otherwise, this would have worked. But anyways, yeah, that's another scenario where you want to use NSLOOKUP. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, other uses of NSLOOKUP. You can look up uh, DNS records of a server, like a text record, uh, MX record of a, of a domain, a lot of things. But this is just meant to be a simple video where you where I show you all the commands that I use uh, for troubleshooting network, not the domain aspect. So yeah, that's how you use NSLOOKUP, just NSLOOKUP and the uh, and the host name. So if I do google.com, it gives me the IP address or the public IP address of google.com. Uh, next one is called netstat. And this is also very, very important command. Uh, what it does is it tells you the active ports your computer is listening to. Let me just correct the spelling here. Computer listening to. And it also shows all the active connection from your computer to the public. So if I run netstat-a, you can see it lists the protocols it lists the local IP address, which is usually 0.0.0, .0 which is my own computer, and my loopback address, along with the port which are which it's listening to. So currently on my computer, these ports are active. Okay, these com these are currently active. This is the name of my computer, and it's listening. My list my computer is listening on these ports for any incoming connection, um, and also they are open. For anyone who is able to get in my local area network, they will be able to try to use these open ports to maybe exploit my computer. So if you want to know your computer, what your computer is connected to, uh, you can use netstat-a to, to figure it out, to check that out. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I know this video was very rushed and all over the place, but hopefully you will find some value out of it. If you have any question, uh, if you want me to go slower, uh, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.